the next talk. Is this for real using social media for knowledge transfer? With uh, three wonderful speakers, Jahira Nuira, Clotilde Meunier, and Chichit. And in case you have questions, please use the chat. Or after the session, you can go back to the lobby and there you will find the networking table where you can yeah, have like an interactive talk with the speakers. And now, um, enjoy. Thank you very much, Josephine, for introducing us. Thank you for your time and welcome everyone to this session. Um, is this for real? So I want to go to the presentations. I'm very happy to be with the uh, parts of my uh, team. I apologize for the speakers who could not uh, be with us today, but I think with the three of us, uh, we'll manage to uh, walk you through an experience that we had um, during a project of ours. Uh, we um, were in the project at the University of Göttingen. Uh, my name is Shahir and we are, I'm an instructional designer. I've been here at the University of Göttingen since 2016. And uh, the last three years I've been really busy uh, with uh, uh, one international project. So what we will do, walk you through what this project is and what this real deal is really about. Um, and then uh, we will also share with you from a perspective of students, um, the use of real and um, as the title says, using social media for a knowledge transfer. Um, I hope uh, that this is of interest for you. Please, um, you know, whenever you have questions, uh, use the chat for that. And uh, if you're interested for more, I'll be in the networking session after our presentation. So the first question is, we're talking about reels, it's all over the place. Uh, uh, what about you? What do you associate with reels? Um, and we'd like to know from you in the chat. So let's do a chat flood, uh, as we know. <laughs> Many of us have been using these a lot. And what do you associate with the reels? That would be, I will take, we'll give you a, a few, um, you know, minutes to do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, quite a lot of things coming in. <laughs> Funny reels from Instagram, fun entertainment. Yeah, our greetings back to everyone who is watching us from uh, other stages all over uh, Germany. So there is, there is this notion of social media. There's also uh, the uh, reel on Instagram. Um, the same principle is on YouTube and it's called shorts. Food content, exactly. Quick explanations. Ah, oh, we're getting closer to things that we were using. Um, short videos, addictive. And um, thank you, Ingrid, uh, for uh, pointing out. I'm not going to read everything, but these associations are um, not so far away from what uh, we know in our context at the university. But let's try to um, put things in context. So I mentioned this project um, and uh, we actually, uh, my team and I, and that's um, part of the team uh, are present today. Um, Clotilde and Chichit have been working also um, supporting us a lot with activities. And it's a project that was financed and funded by the DAD um, for three years, an international program um, for digital uh, programs uh, at the DAD. Seven universities, uh, meaning six uh, institutions uh, together with ours. Um, uh, we will share the link in the chat. What did we do? What was the aim? Um, we wanted to enhance um, the international student uh, journey, uh, meaning that um, the idea uh, behind digital enhancement of studying, of learning is not new. Um, but what do we do if we want to have um, more internationality, internationalization and international? Uh, and so the proposal meant, um, you know, the, the first thing that we looked at, how can we make 
students' lives easier? Um, and how can we give them the possibility, as you can see from uh, the picture, to be more mobile and have the feeling of flying? And what does that mean, on the other hand, for the institution, but also for the uh, teaching uh, stuff? So learning opportunities in a setting um, where also many uh, disciplines, um, the project Lift Sciences Cube uh, was um, you know, focusing on the faculties of life sciences. And you might ask where the cube comes from. Um, well, one of the explanations that we could give is that we wanted the students to, from the life sciences, to live sciences in, in a live manner. Um, we started in April 2020, so you can imagine um, that the live aspect uh, was not possible immediately because we have to, we had to use the virtual mobility. Uh, but then uh, things like summer schools, in our case, we call the summer campus, um, enabled um, the students to come together on campus. Diverse learning spaces, different formats. Um, and then what we wanted to do is to give our uh, community and create a community possibilities to enhance their skills, their competences. And one of the things that we did, we um, talk to students before starting the projects and they told us that they reckon um, the way that we're going to communicate, the way that we're going to learn is going to be to 80% during, you know, based on videos. And we did not ignore that statement. Um, and so in the spirit of teaching students how to hurdle and helping them on many levels, using digital tools, competences, and enhancing them, enabling them to be more competent, uh, the theme video, the creation of videos, the production of videos was something that we have invested a lot of time um, in the project. Um, we created explanatory videos for students um, with the collaboration of our teachers. But then we also spend a lot of time on supporting our students on uh, student-generated content. And I'd like to invite uh, Chichit to say a few words about um, Chichit, your experience, because you were actually very involved, not only into the production of the videos, but also into implementing and uh, using them. So if you'd like to share your experience on creation of videos, um, I think the audience could profit from that A big deal. Thank you so much, Shahira. Um, I'm Titit from the Lip Sciences 3. I, I, I work for the video production and for the social media team in the Lab Sciences 3. Also, I participated in the summer campus and um, excursion to Bosnia. So during that co courses, I produced some videos about summer campus and excursion to Bosnia. So I think instead of like a regular reporting, syst reporting system, I think videos present a good way to share the knowledge about uh, the courses and also what you have learned throughout the courses. And I also think it's quite enjoying to do some editing works and shooting with your fellow students. Yeah. So if you want to know more about the techniques about video production, then I would be happy to share about that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Chichit. So uh, again, I'd like to highlight how uh, important it is for students to be involved in this project, but also, um, as I said in the beginning, the project is over. However, the results um, and uh, what we aim to, um, you know, uh, carry beyond the project uh, is still going on. This is to give you a context that, um, you know, the choice for video was not just some idea that we had um, once we watched a, a YouTube video or because we have created ourselves in collaboration with uh, Brian Mathers in animation that you um, could find on uh, the website. And here, a big shout out to Visual Thinkery and um, we had a props, uh, you know, about the slides. They were really nice and also representing uh, the journey that we had. So thank you for the compliments. Uh, we will make sure that Brian knows about that. But now let's, you know, it took us a little bit more than 10 minutes to get uh, to the point. 
what is the real deal? What is this? Um, you know, why did we go for reels and not, um, you know, explanatory videos? Um, and I think there are a few things um, that have been going on, and I will uh, let uh, Clotilde, um, you know, say more about that. Um, but uh, there are two points that I'd like to mention. Um, as a, you, know, you know, you understand that uh, videos is something that we try to integrate at many levels. Um, also, as a new format uh, where students can sit uh, for exams. And as Chichit said, instead of writing reports, producing a video uh, was something quite new in some of the subjects. Um, but then we also had social media and we had um, a social media team and we were observing a few things. Um, so we had hand over to you, Clotilde, um, if you'd like to, you know, tell us a little bit more about the, this. What, what's the deal with the real? Thank you, Shaira. I'm happy to take over. Hello, I'm Clotilde. Um, so I also worked with Shaira for almost two years as a student assistant for the project and can you maybe go back to the last slide, please? Thank you. Um, so now Shaira has presented to you the different activities that we had and just told you that, you know, videos were a big part of our project. Um, and so it just seemed like a natural thing to add to our social media accounts on Instagram and Twitter um, to just do more in video format. And for example, we had, um, I think it started uh, with a first throwback that we had. So Shaira mentioned the lecture series that we had. They came every semester. And after the first semester, one of my colleagues um, produced a small, you know, throwback video um, with impressions from the first semester. And um, we also used this. And I think it kind of piqued our interest and we thought, okay, we want to just experiment more with this format. Um, and then we started doing a few reels, um, be it for activities with the community, or we also had every Friday um, a post series on sustainability and biodiversity. And we did one post on, uh, the, you know, Göttingen as a bicycle friendly city and it's for our scale and our budget, it got, it, it went viral, you know. We had, I think, um, 9,000 views. Um, and we realized, okay, even though we don't have a lot of budget, we don't have, or we don't have any budget, we don't have a lot of time because we're all student assistants, we realized that we can still make something out of it and have fun and reach more people, like make more people aware of our activities. Um, yeah, so it became kind of a, a regular thing that we did in our social media activities. And then came the end of the project very fast, actually. <laughs> and uh, it was already, I think, January or February 2023. And we realized, OK, we need to start wrapping up. So how do we do that? And because, you know, it started with a throwback for the lecture series, it just made sense for us, I think, to think of it in a video format as well. And we just kind of did the backward planning for the last um, few weeks. And every Monday for six weeks, I think, or seven weeks, we had uh, one reel. Um, just to kind of look back on the project, we started with, OK, what was Live Science Cube about? And then we kind of looked at all the different activities we had for lecturers, for students, the events we organized, the partners um, who helped us, because we were a project that had a network of seven universities. So our team was huge and we also wanted to appreciate those people and the participants who were there. Um, yeah, so it was it was a big thing and it was fun. It was a lot of work, but I think we're happy we did it. Um, Shaira, you can go to the next slide, I think. Um, and as you see um, on the right of the screen, there is uh, the last video on the bottom right has around 9,000 views. So that's the, the bicycle friendly city reel we made. Um, and then there was another reel um, that Sheira made when she was in Rennes visiting one of our partners. 
And then there was another one we did on Göttingen uh, with the, the asking people what was their favorite activity in Göttingen for the summer because the semester was wrapping up. So yeah, just to give you a few examples of, of what we did. And I think with that, I can hand over back to Shaira. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Clotilde. Um, I must let, let me just uh, find the way back to the famous selection. Um, so I think a few things that we have uh, learned here from using the reels, as you heard from Clotilde, we used it for purposes. Uh, not only it was, you know, time to wrap up the marketing, but then to reflect and see how can we connect actually. Uh, and um, because we have used short videos and also videos in general um, in the curricula, integrated in some of the courses also at the summer campus, um, one of the things that we might, um, you know, consider for the future, um, and I'll, I'll start with a point that I find, and I mentioned also in the description of this workshop, the acceptance. Um, how did different actors react to the reels? Um, I mean, if we look at the numbers, um, you know, for all, for our community, uh, one of the, the, the you know, the 9,000 views that, that is something that for our uh, purposes that went viral. However, we all know that these numbers um, are not so convincing. If I would were to go to a professor or a teacher and say, look, this is something that is of interest and don't get me wrong, biking and biking friendly cities, we need more of these. And then the only metrics that we would use it, it be the views, then it would be a little bit superficial. Um, so, the acceptance of these um, might need um, a little bit of more argumentation, a little bit of more, uh, you know, putting things in the context. And, uh, you know, we talked about the limited uh, resources. However, we still managed to create uh, a few things. And I must be very, very honest, now that the project is over, the activity in the social media um, uh, channels, Instagram included, um, are very very sparse and however we did not decide to um you know close these channels because there is still a lot that we can learn from there is it though and this is a little bit provocative enough to get a transfer of knowledge and this is the question that we are supposed to answer here in the um in this presentation um well, I'm not sure I have the answer for that, but let me walk you through a few points for the potential for future. Um, let's not ignore that people do enjoy some bits of, um, you know, um, uh, inspiration and the bikes uh, and also the sustainability um, Fridays, um, you know, they, they were interesting for people. We had suggestions for students from students to do this because that's an, of interest and it's also the sustainability, not only in the subject, but for people who care. Um, and I think what we have learned and in my work, um, I think that the suggestion of using social media to go beyond the things that we saw in the beginning in the chat flood, the distraction, uh, the funny, fun, um, it is possible. So, yeah, having heard a few of these things, um, and I think um, we would like to know from you, um, of course, you can uh, um, express yourself now in the chat, but if you'd like to take this question with me um, later on in the networking tables, if you were to use Reels, where would you do that in a sense of, um, we were thinking about using the social media tool Reels for uh, knowledge sharing. We did it in the project for the knowledge transfer. We did it also for the recognition. Is there any context that is relevant for you and your profession where you would see um, the integration or use of Reel? gonna take a few minutes um if you would like to share this with us in the chat we'd be very happy um to to hear from you because i think our experiment showed that there is potential but the acceptance is not there yet i'm gonna let you think about a few scenarios where you think you could apply reels before trying to wrap this up
And now it's difficult um, having to write this in the chat, <laughs> but we're very, very, um, you know, grateful for you. If you could share your, uh, you know, and speak up your mind actually in the chat. Or if there is no application whatsoever for you, also feel free to share that uh, with us because um, maybe then we'd be more realistic. <laughs> yes, single courses. Yeah. And and please, if you if you uh, have more explanations uh, for that, uh, yeah. Nadine, I'll, I'll read out loud what you just wrote. I'm an IT student, and from a professional perspective, I think to reach uh, girls as they are, a big target group of social media to interest them, interest them in tech as well. Thank you so much for pointing that out. You are addressing a very important point. Who is using social media and for what? And I think raising awareness about that, making people interested is also a very powerful tool. Um, Henrique Rios could be used to talk about new research and short, short versions of papers. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think this the problem with the reputation just because it's mainly used for one purpose doesn't mean that it could not be used for another purpose. Uh, Anya, um, we are already using Instagram for our project. Thank, yeah, thanks for sharing. Reels uh, would be nice too because the topic of sustainable mobility and transportation is the topic everyone has an opinion about. Yes, we do have the opinions. And let's not forget that with the views, we also have the comments. And so our institute has a lot of interesting findings. I'd love to connect. Please, if you have time to come to the networking table. Um, yeah. Uh, exactly. So I'd, I'd like to, you know, there. Are, thank you so, so, so very much. I'd like to invite you to read out um, uh, the, the, what is being happening in, in the chat. And we'd like to also uh, take advantage of that and maybe integrate it uh, when we share, um, you know, the slides with you. Um, I mean, Chichit and Kvetit, please feel free to interrupt me or remind me if I forgot something. But I'd like to share a story with you. What you're seeing now is um, a live recording of a session, the last project meeting that we had uh, with the, the presence of uh, many of our partners. And so the results that you're seeing are not linked only to the use of reels and videos, but to what have we learned, what are our thoughts after the three years we have invested. However, you see that a few things can easily apply to the use or to the importance of Reels. And I take three messages with me. Just try it, even though the context is not appropriate or the reputation is not so good, just try it. And also encouraging um, the students to create and give them the space to say, let me show you um, what I can do. That is also like a very, very, very powerful tool. And um, the other thing that I'm taking with me that is also um, very much supporting the use for Reels as a, a new format, uh, and not so new because I see there are many projects that they're using this. Um, I think that the um, the viewpoints from different cultures, let's not forget what we have learned in this project is that, yes, we knew our partners, but we have discovered that the integration or the creation of videos, like Chichit said, an excursion in Bosnia-Herzegovina is different uh, than the videos created in visiting Chile um, and 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 the the uh, the productions that have occurred and that um, came out as products have taught us more about the acceptance of these media and how they can be useful. So you probably remember in the beginning um, that I showed you something about that the project would like to get rid, move from this let's get rid of so many hurdles so the path is smoothened for our students we moved from that idea and thought about let's teach our students how to hurdle however i think that here we could also teach 
or you know integrate other people in the teaching and learning process we have learned so much from our students and those who helped us also to think about the social media strategy strategy the sharing creating the reels and my message would be let's not leave our teachers out of the picture because so far the acceptance in that group is skeptical and i think that should be seen as an opportunity and so maybe the question that we should have asked ourselves and i think this is widening the horizon why we are teaching our students how to hurdle let's not forget to equip our teachers and all the support how to hurdle as well so thank you very much everyone thank you Clotid and chichit this was our presentation about is this for real using social media for knowledge transfer and i hope that um you liked the conversation that we had a little bit um and i am very much looking forward to see many of you i know the places are limited at the networking table but if you have any you know burning questions the chat is still open and i think I, josephine we have a few minutes more um but from my side thank you so much for taking the time and I see that around 40 people were here all the time. And that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for these interesting insights. Yeah, we have two minutes left. So in case people have questions, um, please ask in the chat. Um, yeah, and as you already said, people can meet you at the networking tables. You can reach them when you go back to the lobby. And there, there's like a huge icon, Netzwerk Tisch and networking tables. and. Yeah, there you can cannot miss it. Yes. You cannot miss it. <laughs> you cannot miss it. Yeah, so thank you so much. I will um, uh, close the session um, uh, and stop the recording. But uh, yeah, you will meet the speakers at the networking table. Bye bye. Looking forward to it. Bye, everyone.